This is my first YouTube video to document and provide information to those who would attempt to build um, feeders, bullet or case feeders for uh, their presses. I'm in the process of working through uh, those kinds of, of decisions that take place during the time that you times that you would be building and buying and uh, putting it together in your own little shop. I have a pretty handy shop, uh, lots of amenities. Um, and as I started to work on building the hopper for uh, case feeding, I ran into a number of challenges in uh, coming up with a motor to drive the uh, plate uh, that drops the case down into the feed tube. And so, this, since this is my first video in documenting my work, um, I guess it would be uh, good to tell you that I'm working on automating a single stage press, uh, a rock chucker, to uh, decap um, brass in one operation without using uh, my hands. And so, uh, what I'd like to do is just uh, begin with the part of this process where I tried to find a motor that would drive uh, the plate inside of a hopper uh, adequately enough that it would do the task. And the first uh, thing that I ran into was the RPM problem. The motors that I found all uh, easily available were all uh, somewhere between 10 and uh, uh, 100 RPM. And uh, one of the uh, easiest ones to get a hold of uh, was a motor um, uh, out of a uh, refrigerator. And the particular motors that I went and found and got for reasonably cheap, five to ten dollars a piece, all rotated between 25 and 30 RPM, which is way too fast, but has plenty of power uh, to do the work in the hopper way too fast for the hopper. I went out to a scientific supply and I came up with a Pittman motor and um, it's a 12 volt motor so you can see from the bench that I was experimenting with a 12 volt supply you can see from my hopper that I ultimately put together that I ended up with a 110 volt motor. Uh, this motor would have done the job uh, very adequately, lots of power, lots of torque, um, the right um, uh, shaft size for driving but again, um, the, pro the basic problem was it turned too fast, uh, about 50 RPM. I went and took a bunch of motors out of cars, uh, which some of the guys on the sites had recommended. Uh, the closest one I got was a motor that turned at about 150 RPM. It's a DC 12 volt motor, and it's on the bottom end of an antenna. Um, and uh, you can see it has a lead screw on it and uh, that lead screw drives a circular um, gear and uh, that might turn very slow but transitioning that gear to the hopper was a problem so that didn't work um, that cost me uh, 28 bucks to try uh, didn't work uh, I found a micro motor at a, uh, a hobby store um, this thing runs on uh, 12 volts DC and uh, turns real good <laughs> <laughs> uh, the guy didn't know what RPM, it's unmarked. You can see how small it is, as small as one of my fingers. Uh, would have been a real problem transitioning the drive shaft into the hopper, but it uh, turns out that it uh, turns at 5,000 or 3,000 RPM, and uh, that didn't work. I uh, went down to the local uh, appliance repair shop, and I found this little pancake motor. And this is underneath the bottom of the turntable in a microwave. This thing turned the, uh, the plate in the hopper, uh, but as soon as you added shells to it, it failed. It, it stopped and it wouldn't run because it didn't have enough uh, power. I went on uh, knowing what I had then in that this was the right motor. It's got easy attachments, couple of screw holes, uh, runs on 110 volts, easy to get a hold of. And I found that um, in uh, uh, several appliances, there are um, 
uh, these same kinds of motors. One of them is a barbecue uh, rotisserie motor and for about nine dollars on sale admittedly um, I, I got a motor and it looks exactly like this on the, this surface with the same drive but it's twice as thick so it has twice the windings and it, it's the one I ended up using here in the hopper which I'll get to later but I just kinda wanted to give some direction on the motor if you're thinking of building your own uh, uh, case feeder bullet feeder you're gonna have to solve this motor thing admittedly this motor with um, uh, even the one that I have in here, which you'll see in one of my next videos, uh, even if you have the double one, I put some bullets in there. I put in 250, uh, 380 auto, and uh, it stopped it. So I still have to solve the problem where I get um, the motor that will run a bullet feeder. It runs a case feeder with about 500 brass in here and uh, worked well. So as I was investigating, I also discovered that uh, in a refrigerator, uh, some refrigerators, there's an ice maker motor. And uh, what I want to point out to you is that the ice maker motor doesn't have a single gear box assembly. It has a double. So it's about this high. It's the same motor. So that's the end of part one. Join me on part two. We'll be continuing to develop the motor for bullet case feeders. Uh, homemade. Thank you.